Stephen King's It, one of the greatest books you'll ever read, clocking in at 1,138 pages. It seems like a book that is so hard to adapt. We got the miniseries, and although I do not think the miniseries is a very good movie, I do think it's a decent adaptation. And I say that because 98% of the movie is in the novel. So, you know, say what you want about the miniseries. I know a lot of people think it's a classic and that it's this, you know, amazing movie. It's not an amazing movie. Anyone who's recently rewatched it is like, oh, this has nostalgia, but damn. I mean, Tim Curry's Pennywise obviously is wonderful. And there's a lot of good things about the miniseries. I'm not going to say there isn't. But, you know, and these things exist. I can't just ignore them outright and only just talk about this movie. I mean... This is a re-adaptation. You know, I do, not re I do not think of this as a remake. But the 1990 movie was so popular and is so popular that it definitely is going to be compared to it regardless of if it's a remake or not. Um, which most people are going to consider it a remake. Does it do it better than the remake is the question. Is this warranted? Does this need to exist? Did we get something better than that movie? Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. A thousand times over. Yes. This was everything. Now, when I had heard of this, you know, re-adaptation happening and Kerry Fukunawa, I never know how to say his name, uh, from True Detective was on board to direct it. I was, you know, so excited because he had done some stuff that was just like so dark and just, he just seemed like the perfect guy to adapt something like this. And when I had heard he'd left the project and that they had picked up Andy Muschietti from Mama, I wasn't a big fan of Mama. I thought it was visually cool, but overall I was kind of mad about it walking out. So when they announced him, I was bummed. I mean, I was just like, okay, this movie probably visually be pretty cool, but oh no, no. And I was talking a lot of trash. Not a ton. I'm not really a big trash talker, but you know, for me. And then I started seeing some images and I started seeing, I mean, Stranger Things, I guess, is probably where the tide turned for me a little bit because... I loved Stranger Things just like everyone else so very much. And then they started announcing that they were going to cast some of the kids. I remember watching Stranger Things like, man, these kids would be great. And then they started announcing that they were in it. And I was like, oh shit, the kids from, from Stranger Things are going to be in this? Oh wow, okay, now? And then they released some imagery and I was like, this is really fucking cool. So... When I saw the trailer, I was, you know, I was like, okay, this could be pretty good, you know. And I went into the theater tonight thinking that I was going to see a great movie. Uh, for some reason, I had completely turned because I had seen like 10 reviews from people that I trust saying it was awesome. And so I was like, oh man, I think this is going to be fantastic. And it blew away my expectations. Usually I do a good and bad, but... I honestly, like, I'd have to really, really nitpick and think hard to come up with a negative to say about this movie. I really don't have much to say. I'm so happy. I am such a happy Stephen King fan. I am such a, a happy film and horror fan. It pretty much appealed to every bit of me, every bit of my senses, every bit of my likes, everything. This movie is a amazing coming of age story as it is in the book this is a coming of age story first and it has horror throughout you don't ever have to wait in this movie it is constantly back and forth going from the you know the funny that was it man that i will have to say the thing that surprised me the absolute most about this movie overall was how fucking funny it was it was funny as shit all of the characters, especially Richie Tozier, which is he's supposed to be funny. In the book, he's definitely the loudmouth. He's, you know, the uh, the talker. So, um, trash mouth, as they call him. He is, 
just hilarious. The kid who plays him is so good as Richie. The girl who plays Bev. Oh my God, perfect, perfect, perfect. Bill. Now, something I was really concerned about going into this, because in the trailers, Bill does not have a stutter. But in this, he has a full stutter throughout the entire film. So thank God for that, because I don't know. I, I'm guessing they just cleared it up for the trailer, because the trailer probably wouldn't have sold well with a kid. Blah, 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 blah. It would have taken too much time, and the trailer would have said. So I guess they probably just took the stutter out of the trailer, but thank God it's in the movie. One thing that I will say that I was a little disappointed on, this is a mild spoiler-ish kind of thing, if you've read the book, um, kind of, not really, is the lack of beep beep Richie. I was really bummed that it's only said one single time in the movie. So I was glad it was said at all, because I think that's a very iconic line within the book and even the miniseries. And I was really, it was lacking in the movie. Like, they told Richie to shut up a lot, but no beep beep. And that, I don't know if that was just a choice, like, that's too inside jargon for an audience of, you know, a mass populace. Maybe it'll work in a, in a TV adaptation, but in a big screen, maybe people will be sitting in the theater like, what the fuck does that mean? You don't want them confused. I'm not sure why it was taken out, but it was. Um, but as I said, it was said once, so thank God, because I would have been a little annoyed if it was not said in the slightest. So that, you know, that was in there. Now, the atmosphere in this film, I guess the main thing to talk about, what everyone wants to know about, is, you know, Bill Skarsgård's performance as Pennywise. It's fabulous. I mean, it's just so good. I think that it will grow on me more as I watch it. I think at first it is a lot to take in because it is pretty drastically different than Tim Curry's Pennywise, which it should be. I mean, you don't want a carbon copy. You don't, you know, this is a much creepier, you know, the, I guess the difference though and why people may be upset about this Pennywise if they are is because this Pennywise is always creepy and you don't lure in children by being creepy. You lure them in by being funny and and appearing to be, you know, um, someone that they want to be around. And his his fucking guy is never ever f <laughs> appealing to children. So that is a little bit of a stray from the book. Uh, Pennywise is supposed to. He's a clown to draw in these kids. Um, and then obviously takes on other incarnations. Now, in the miniseries, there are some variations and things that stray from the book as far as the other incarnations. And that happens a little here as well. But I really liked those choices. I thought they were really effective. And some of the ones that they kept from the book, I was very excited to see those as well. This film has it all. If you are a Stephen King fan who adores the book, or if you've never even read a single page, I think that the heart of this movie will grasp you. It will draw you in, and it will hold you and take you through the entire experience because it is such a well-made film. It is so well-paced. The cinematography is amazing. The soundtrack, the score, the humor the acting, the chemistry between the children, whoever casted this movie, whoever, you know, I heard that they had got the kids together to hang out for a bit before the movie so that there was a camaraderie between them. And it absolutely shows within this film. The kids very much feel like friends. I felt like I was reading about Beverly Marsh and Bill Denbro and Eddie Kesbrack. And all these characters that I love from the novel. Like I really felt like they were coming from the page to the screen. Everything was there. This was such a faithful adaptation. It was. It cut out a lot of stuff. But even the stuff it cuts out, it gives minor mentions to. There's little stuff. Like they did cut out a lot of the back history. And obviously this is part one. And it does promise that at the end of the movie. That this is chapter one. Um, so you do know that if you're a fan of the book, or it doesn't matter if you're not, there is a part two eventually coming, so you know. After a lot of the failures of Stephen King's adaptations lately, now, 
everyone has their own opinion. And if you like some of these movies, that is completely, you know, good for you. But as far as I was concerned, you know, The Dark Tower and um, the, you know, Cell with John Cusack and um, the, the Carrie remake. And there's been a lot of them lately that are just either subpar or just downright awful. And so Stephen King needed a fantastic adaptation. Now, Mr. Mercedes is currently airing and it's wonderful and a near pitch perfect uh, adaptation. So if you haven't watched that, that's fantastic. So we do have that going on and we have some other ones coming up. You know, Mike Flanagan's Gerald's Game and uh, 1922 and the Castle Rock series. So we have a lot of stuff to look forward to. But man, how fantastic it was to get a, a mate. And I'm going to tell you, man, outside of the Dark Tower, this is the book that I wanted to see done right more than anything. So them fucking up like Cell or something like that. It's like, who cares? The Dark Tower was, that one really hurt me. I'm not going to lie. So this one was much needed. It came just right in the right time because it's not long after that was released. Uh, so, God, I mean, I couldn't be more happy. I truly am just so, so happy. And if you are a fan like I am of this stuff, I just, I can't, I can't for the life of me figure out how someone could be a fan of Stephen King, this novel, the original miniseries, uh, any of that stuff, or or a film fan, or a horror fan, and not like this movie. I mean, it legitimately has almost zero flaws. You could go through any film and pick out little things, but man, what a wonderful, wonderful film. We are so blessed to have this. Thank you, Andy, and everyone who worked on this film for bringing a fucking dream to life for me. Thank you.